Howdy folks. Well, back on the 2007 Dodge Ram 1500, uh, 5.7 liter Hemi. Um, anyway, so what we got problem, what we got going on this time is the four wheel drive is not working. And uh, I just rebuilt the engine in this. Uh, actually, bought this truck back in May. Uh, that's been uh, several months ago, and got the engine rebuilt so I've never actually driven this truck too much I mean I have now since I've had it for about a couple of weeks uh, but I've never had the four-wheel drive working so uh, or at least I've never used it and I went to try to use it the other day and it wasn't working so um, as you can see right here it's just got the knob right here um, my 97 Dodge has the uh, stick down on the down on the floor so Let's see what we can come up with. I want to show you what it's doing. Uh, turn the truck on here for a minute. Now if you happen to see that check engine light come on, it might come on. I've got an O2 sensor I think I need to replace. I was just kind of waiting, but I cleared the code, but it might come on. If it does, it doesn't have anything to do with this problem. Okay, so I am going to turn this to four-wheel lock. And that's what I get is a flashing light, four-wheel drive light. Now I'm going to turn it over to four-wheel low. And that one stays solid. And the bottom one kind of flashes. All right. I'm going to turn it back to two-wheel drive. I'll put it in neutral. And we're going to try it that way once. Okay. Uh, so four-wheel drive. Yep, still flashing. Four-wheel low. See, that's a little different. Now, the UR, I think, is supposed to put it in neutral when you do this. I've never had one like this that's electronic like that. Uh, but, uh, anyway, it's in four-wheel low right now. And, and, of course, you see that the four-wheel drive one is not flashing. Oh, now it does nothing. Hmm. Completely went off. Let's go to four-wheel drive. Nothing. Back to two-wheel drive. That's interesting. This is the first thing I've seen, seen it do that. Back to four-wheel. Okay. Now... As I'm doing this, I can hear that thing clicking down below. I don't know if you can hear that on there. Okay, I'm going to take it out of that. Take it out of that. We're back in two-wheel drive now. All right. I'm going to put it in park for a second. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you guys underneath. I'm going to show you the... Uh, well, let me turn this off. We'll start over here in a second. I'm going to show you the actuators that are down there. And then I will uh, put you guys down there while I flip that uh, that dial and you can hear that. Just a second. Okay, so I've got a light shining here. Now this right here, and this right here, that's the actuator that's on the uh, transfer case. And it's pretty much right underneath you, you know, when you're driving there, the, the uh, driver's side. So I'll just come up and kind of feed this up through here a little bit. You can see that there's a plug there I think you can see that uh, anyway there's a plug there and that's the one that's making all the noise now I'll show you the one up front all right so this sorry we're kind of a little tight spot here I'm trying to show you but this is the actuator right here on the front now this is the front uh, front axle kind of back this up and show you see there's a electrical uh, out, uh, plug right there in it and uh, here's here's where all the magic happens right in here there's a little and now you got uh, the shaft here and then this one here comes through Now normally this one's not turning but you basically have two splines shafts uh, that are that just basically butt up to one another Hold on a second anyway you got two splines uh, shafts that kind of butt up to one another and then there's a sleeve that uh, that slides that over onto this uh, and, and joins the two which causes that front front wheel to start spinning and you have a four wheel or turning and you have a, a four wheel drive that's how that works I'm not real sure how the back one works I don't know much about this stuff at all to be quite honest with you I'm just kind of taking you along for the ride where we can uh, try to figure out what's wrong all right, so what I'm going to do now is get my jack and uh, four jack stands, and I'm going to put uh, put this thing up in the air and see if I can turn some things. We'll see what's turning and what's not. All right, we're up on jack stands now, so let's uh, get the truck going and see what we got going on.
Okay, I'm gonna put it in neutral for now. This guy in four-wheel drive. And now I'm gonna put it in drive. And turn this put this in neutral turn this back to two-wheel drive put it back in drive put off the brake okay our wheels are still turning Pull this off and see what we got here. Looks like you just squeeze this right here. There we go, and it pulls off. Just a four four point connector in there. Uh, instead of my meter, I just got my test light, and we'll we'll try that. See what power we got. Now this uh, this I did have unplugged. This is part of the wiring harness. I did have this unplugged when I uh, had the engine out, and I, I do remember plugging that in. Uh, you know, so it could possibly be a wire uh, pulled uh, pulled apart in there or something. I'm usually pretty good about pulling on the plugs, not the wires, but it is possible. Uh, wouldn't that be nice? But anyway, we'll give us a try and uh, see what see what power we've got going to it. All right, I've got the truck. Uh, running obviously and it's in neutral and in four-wheel drive uh, we'll test our wheels here you probably can't see the tester I'll try to do it so you can see uh, okay we got power on that one nothing there nothing there nothing there I don't know what we're supposed to have but we do have power on that one coming to it okay I have to do a little research. Well, folks, I've got it in two-wheel drive right now. Uh, took it out of four-wheel drive and put it in two-wheel drive. It seems to me like there should be another one of these lit up if it's in two-wheel drive because I don't know why there's four... Uh, four points here, but I think because that actuator uh, that actuator slides that sleeve Slides it on to engage the two shafts and then slides it back off to disengage it. So I Don't think there's a spring inside there That holds that away like when you just you know to cut the power from it that the spring pushes it back out of the way I don't think there is there could be but I don't think so so I would think there's a power to another one Well, it's that same one Nothing on that one, nothing on that one, nothing on that one. So, well, I'm going to do something I should have already done, should have been the first thing I did, I guess, see if there's some kind of a fuse somewhere. All right, well, here we are back under the truck. Um, I did not find a fuse, and I really kind of didn't think I would. Uh, we, I did have power to this and everything, so I uh, didn't, didn't think there would be, but I didn't find a fuse for it anyway. So uh, this is actually, well, let's see, the last, last time you saw me here, it was uh, Saturday, and it's Thursday now. I ordered a new one of these uh, because I do think that's what it is. I kind of had done... Oh, just some thinking on it and and uh, did try to kind of uh, do a little bit of test using these wires here um, had some jumper wires and and uh, really wasn't coming up with anything so I'm hoping that it is that and uh, we can just maybe replace that and 
and be done with it but <clears throat> we will also uh, take it and <clears throat> do kind of a bench test maybe see if we can get something out of it and the and the new one too we'll see if we can get it to do something uh, so let's take this off and all that consists of is uh, there, these four bolts here one two and then two on the top here and I believe they're 13 millimeters uh, take this plug off here there we go okay now I need to know which is the power okay so the top one what we have is a blue wire with a purple stripe and that's our power wire and then underneath that is a just black wire I'm assuming that's a ground and then we've got two purple wires one is a purple wire with a blue stripe and the other one is a purple wire with a green stripe so there's four in there and also I was thinking too I had said that I didn't think that this would have a spring in it but I think it probably does have a spring in it I've kind of changed my mind just going by the wires and all this kind of stuff uh, so I didn't know why we had four wires and I still don't really know but I'm gonna guess and say like I say you have one power wire and you've got a ground wire one constant power one ground I mean and then then one wire is gonna be to the actuator here to uh, to activate it and then I'm guessing maybe the other one goes up to the uh, switch or maybe to the light uh, that that tells you whether it's in four-wheel drive or not I'm not real sure about that but anyway uh, let's get into it I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and I do have a uh, um, drain pan underneath this catch any any kind of fluid that might be in here I should have a little extension, but we'll see what we can do here. Hello. And again. There, I think I can get it. All right. Well, let me see if I can sneak you over here and we'll kind of show you what that looks like in there. If that's possible. Get some light in here first, maybe. Okay. So we're in a tight spot. I don't have the truck jacked up anymore. Okay. Now you can see that right there that just slides over and uh, are supposed to slide over when the when the uh, when they're all lined up and that joins those two shafts together and that fork that you just saw come off of the uh, uh, that was on the uh, actuator there that course uh, it goes around here and that's what moves back and forth so 
Well, I'm glad to see a little fluid came out of there, or a little oil came out of there. I actually have not checked the oil level in there either. I hope there's some in there. I guess that could have been the problem the whole time too, but uh, it does seem like it has some in there, uh, and I will check it uh, when we get all this done and make sure that the uh, that it's uh, full in there. So let's go inside and see if we can do a bench test on it. All right, so I've got some wires down in here uh, on the little pins in there. Uh, and what I've done is just took some little short pieces of wire that I cut and strip it off. And the reason I'm doing this, take just a couple of wires at a time here. I'm just taking them and I pull some out. Say a few at a time. And that's probably good enough. And the reason I'm doing this is because it's hard to get uh, uh, alligator clips down there to touch all these things, and, and I don't want to touch two wires at the same time that I don't want to touch. So I'm just taking some wires out of these wires and just press it down in there like that. That way I've got all these wires that are in there pretty solid uh, and uh, then I can touch these without having to get in there. Now I've got a battery here. It's all charged up. See these alligator clips that just be too much to go down in that hole to try to get several of them in there without touching I think so that one we'll use the red one here oh and by the way I uh, remember I uh, found out which ones was the hot wire in there so I'm just gonna go ahead and keep with that the blue one this one here is on top the blue ones on the top we're gonna use green for that black one in there that was ground and uh, they go to the positive on the battery. I'll hook that up to this one. All right. And negative on the battery. Hook that up to this one. All right. This out of the way now. We should be able to touch this one or this one to this ground and have it do something. It wants to but it's not doing it is it? Let's see what this one does. It may do nothing because like I said before that might be to a light or something. So okay. It's trying to work. And I kind of heard that when I was doing my test there. I did that off camera. I was doing my test and, and it just wasn't, uh, that's what I was hearing. It was like it was trying to, but it wasn't quite. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that one's uh, no good. But we are going to get our uh, new one and we'll try it too. put all the wires back in the exact same spot they were before. Put our power to that one. Make sure we don't touch our ground here. Here we go. And there's our ground. Let's see what we got. definitely working. Anyway, you can tell uh, that it's, it's certainly working now. So I think I will take and put this on the truck and hopefully that will take care of the problem. Hey folks, I went back to the old one just to make sure that I was 
putting the right can I mean putting enough pressure on there because it was kind of jumping around this one was kind of jumping around a little bit too but uh, after I hold this solidly on there you can see that that is not going to go so just wanted to make sure Making sure we put our, make sure that fork goes right in there over that sleeve. This thing cost, with shipping, let's see, I got it through Rock Auto, and uh, let's see, it was like $93 or something, but with shipping it was like $102, and then probably a little tax that they put on there too. And it's got a three-year three -year warranty, I think it was what it has on it. Riley wanted uh, like $215 for it. Well, I was gonna try to. Sorry if my hand's in the way. I'm gonna put it on by hand here instead of the. Instead of the uh, air ratchet there. I don't know what the torque specs are on this thing. Uh, I could kind of feel it when it was coming off. It wasn't a bunch, but probably never would be able to find it in my Haynes manual anyway. I couldn't even find them talking about taking this off or on anyway. So I'll have to wing it here. Yeah, I can feel it get snug there. back in oh just to tell you folks this is uh so the top one right here is the power now that's the top back and i say back and i'm talking about towards the axle here the top one is the power which was blue with a purple stripe the bottom was ground which was black the top one over on the front was a purple with green stripe and the one on the bottom, which is the one that actuates that, is the one that moves it, is a purple with blue stripe. So, stick this on and hear it snap, which it did. So let's give it a try and see if that works. Alright, let's fire this baby up. Go ahead and put it in neutral. I honestly don't know if you're supposed to. I've heard that. Not really. 
don't worry about them brake lights. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but that's another problem to, to deal with. But uh, anyway, they come off and on every once in a while. I'm not sure what's going on with that yet. Maybe that'll be another video. We'll see. Anyway, we're in two-wheel drive right now. I'm going to turn it into four-wheel drive. Blink, blink, blink. Please go solid. It's not going solid. That's not good. I got some other problem then well folks uh, it's nighttime now uh, I, I had to come back and I had to wait a little while before I came back and worked on it but anyway I got it working uh, I took that actuator back off and I left it plugged in and I had my daughter get in the truck and start the truck she put it in neutral and I got underneath there um, and and uh, was watching that actuator. I wanted to see if that fork was going to move. I didn't know if it was sending power down to it or not. Uh, anyway, so I had her to do that, put it in neutral then, and then uh, put it in four-wheel drive. And it, sure enough, it, it moved on its own just fine, went in and out. I told her I'd had her do it several times, so I knew I was getting power to that thing. So then I put it back on and uh, had her do it again, and it the light was still blinking it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't work so anyway I noticed that the two uh, so I took it back off yet again and I saw that the splines weren't lined up so because it was trying it was pushing against that other that other shaft there you know it just wasn't able to wasn't lined up and it was pushing against it so anyway I uh, raised up the got my jack raised up the passenger side uh, wheel so I could turn just that wheel by itself and uh, and I put and, and I slid that uh, sleeve right over to it then or on it where it was uh, where it was connecting the two so then I put the actuator back on and it lined up just fine and I put it back on and and now it's working so anyway uh, and of course I let it down I'm gonna turn the truck on now and uh, see what we got going put it in neutral and it turn it in four-wheel drive and there you go it's flashing a little bit I went around just drove around just a little bit and uh, I'm gonna take it back out of four-wheel drive kind of flashes a couple times and then all right now I'm gonna take you guys for a little ride here in the dark I guess I can turn my lights on there we go And I, I did this a few times, just kind of drove around uh, to see if it would uh, engage and not have any problem. I, I'm still a little confused by this. But you know, that actuator was not good. It was obviously not good. We tested it and it wasn't, wasn't engaging. So uh, I don't know why this wasn't why this wasn't engaging because I, I tried that too after I was um, had done that the first time when I was driving and it wouldn't, uh, ah, my seatbelt light's gonna keep dinging now. So let me get get us lined up here and uh, put it in neutral and four wheel drive and it engages and it is in four wheel drive too because when I run, went around this corner here uh, when I went around this corner up here a little bit it I can feel it pulling so I know it I know it's engaging I'm sorry about that seatbelt thing but uh, anyway like right here yeah I can, I can boy that's really pulling like there it, uh, doesn't like to go around corners as they all seem to be but anyway four-wheel drive is working now I don't know how long it's gonna work or what that was all about why it would not engage I kind of had a thought that maybe that uh, sleeve was pushing against it because I felt some pressure when I took that back off that last time I felt some pressure it was still pushing so maybe it was just kind of in a bind there and I needed to release that pressure again and then get it lined up so I don't know that's just a thought uh, like I said I'm still a little confused by this but um, anyway that's all I have for you uh, this time uh, hopefully that might help somebody out that's trying to track down this problem um, so 
uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time uh, on to the next problem. See you later.